Today we're going to talk about images. We use the word image all the time in popular speech. We say someone is the spitting image of their parents, or uh, we think about the word image as it connects to the word imaginary. Both of those uh, embody some of what we mean by the word image when we talk about optics. An image is not an actual object itself, but rather a copy or a replica of the, Im of the actual object. And in optics, when we talk about the image, what we're thinking about is what our mind perceives as opposed to the actual object that's in front of us. You're a lot looking at me right now. Actually, you were looking at me in, as you were looking at the image of me in this mirror right here. And as we talk about images, we have to keep in mind how our minds perceive light and how that's somewhat different as res uh, than the light that's actually, uh, the, how that light is shaped uh, as it comes into our mind, as it comes to our eyes and, and perceived by our mind from what actually might be there. So it's first important to think a little bit about light coming from a distant object. If you remember from uh, our last conversation, light is reflected off of various objects either uh, through so-called specular reflection or diffuse reflection. An a not shiny object like my clothing right here is diffusely reflecting light from all these uh, light sources around us and some of it reaches your camera or some of it reaches your eye. And if we were looking at a small object like a flower, then that, that object is not shiny and is, is spreading light in all different directions. And if we think about light coming from a distant source, let's say the sun, then some of it is reflected in all different directions and just only a small fraction of that light reaches our eye. But our mind is very good at taking those light rays that are emanating outward from such an object and extrapolating them back. So if I see light rays coming toward me, then my mind is really good at taking those light rays and aiming them back to perceive depth and the size of an object. We have to draw the same kind of light rays diffusely reflecting off of any large or extended object. If we were looking at a flower standing in front of us, let's say a sunflower, then all parts of the flower are diffusely reflecting light. And if there is sun, sunlight coming into this flower from above, then the top of the flower is diffusing, diffusely reflecting light in all different directions. I've drawn just a few light rays that head toward my eye in this picture. But of course, some light rays are heading out toward the top. But my eye sees light rays coming toward me from the top of that flower. In the same token, every other place on the flower is diffusely reflecting light. The sunlight comes in, and it's going to spread out uh, in, as it, it reflects off that leaf of the flower or off the base of the flower. And here again, I've drawn some light rays uh, in, some, in one particular set of directions, the ones that are coming toward my eye. And my mind is very good at taking all those light rays and extrapolating them back and using that information to ask myself, how far is that flower away from me? How, how far away is it from me, the observer? And how big is the flower? The light rays from the top of the flower coming in from up here and the light rays from the, top of the bottom of the flower coming up from up there, they're both reaching my eye. And mentally, I am doing this pattern recognition where I extrapolate those light rays back and I am able to make judgments about the relationship of the flower. Is it upside down? Is it upside right? How tall is it? How wide is it? And how far away is it from me? And this is what our minds do even though we don't really think about that process very much. The time when our mind is fooled is when there are mirrors involved because mirrors make light travel not in straight lines. As we learned last time, mirrors make light bent turn direction. They, ref the, they reflect light and the, we use the law of reflection to describe that, that angle at which uh, light will reflect. But if I am looking at an object, here's an object, and I'm standing in front of a mirror, so please imagine that this dotted line represents a mirror standing in front of me and I'm looking right into it. Then if I'm looking into the mirror, I'm the observer right here, and I look straight this direction over toward the mirror, I'm not looking directly at the object, but I will see the object. We know this when we stand in front of the bathroom mirror or in front of the mirror at the store. If I look into the mirror, I can see the object. Uh, stand it could be my friend standing right next to me. It could be uh, a potted plant or whatever. I still see the object. And the question now is, how can we draw uh, what it is that we see? Well, we see the rays of light that are reflected off the mirror. And set of light rays. Here's one and it's heading in toward the mirror. If there were no mirror here it would just keep on going forever in a straight line. 
But of course, the fact that there is a mirror right at this location means that some of the light, well, the light will reflect. And if we use the law of reflection, then light that's coming in exactly perpendicular to the mirror heads exactly back toward the object. But light that comes in at a slight angle, I would draw a perpendicular right here. And if the light is coming in from a certain angle to the left of that perpendicular, then it's going to reflect to that same angle to the right of the perpendicular. And I can do the same right here. I can draw a little perpendicular. And this light ray is coming in a little bit to the left of the perpendicular and heading a little bit to the right of the perpendicular as it reflects back off of the mirror. And I can keep doing this process. You notice that the angle of incidence, the angle which is of the light ray entering the mirror, changes every time. But it's always this is true that the angle into the perpendicular is the same as the angle out. And if you're the observer and now looking into this mirror, what is it you see? You see a bunch of light rays spreading out as they come toward you. And our minds are not good at recognizing the fact that light, that light actually took a reflection and has it heading back to you. You, t as an observer, tend to think that those light rays all extrapolate back toward a common origin. In other words, you think that this light ray is coming from back here, this light ray is coming from back there, and you just keep extending these in straight lines, judging that they, they all come together at some distant location on the right-hand side of the mirror. So to our minds, we think that there's an object back there behind the mirror and that all the light is coming straight toward us because we see that light rays spreading out just like we would if there was a real object back here. In fact, there's not a real object back there. We call it an imaginary object or an image. And this is what we mean by image versus object. It's important to recognize that not everything we see with our eyes when we see something is the object itself. Sometimes we just perceive the image. The image can be defined as the convergence of light rays or the apparent convergence of light rays. In this case, the light rays never actually did converge. The real light rays came in toward the mirror and then spread out from the mirror because they were diverging outwards as they left the object. But our minds think that they did come from a common place or they did converge at one point, And we think that that occurred back behind the mirror. If you were to draw, extrapolate those light rays back and do this yourself, this might be something like what you would see. So we would draw light rays coming into the mirror and real light rays reflect off. But if we were standing here, we would extrapolate them all the way back and we would think that there's an object back here behind the mirror.